Hi, I'm makeup artist Just In Time. Welcome back to Make Up Your Mind TV and our first episode of Beauty History, a new series where I'll be going over the history of some of your favorite cosmetic lines, makeup artists, as well as the products themselves. Since this is our first episode, I wanted to jump right in with a world-renowned cosmetic line and really just a leader in the field of makeup artistry, Max Factor. If I were to say to you, Max Emilian Factorowicz, would you know who I was talking about? Because I wouldn't. Maximilian was born in Poland on September 15th of 1887 to a working class family, and little did they know he would grow up to become the one and only Max Factor. By eight years old, Max was working as an apprentice in a pharmacy as well as dentistry. This showcases a skill for not only note taking, but also organization that would come into play later in his life when starting his own business. By nine years old, he was actually an apprentice to a wig maker and cosmetician at Anton's in Berlin, a very prestigious salon, very well known for its wig making. At 14, Max began working at Corpo, a Moscow wig maker and cosmetician to the Imperial Russian Grand Opera. From 18 to 22, Max would serve in the hospital corps for the Imperial Russian Army. Once being discharged, he decided to open up his own shop, selling handmade rouges, creams, and fragrances. This would be the start of the company that would later become Max Factor. While a touring Russian theater group was showcasing Max's makeup, it was noticed by Russian nobility. He was then brought in and appointed to be the official Russian cosmetology expert for the royals. This led to him being closely monitored. However, it was a wildly prestigious position for someone to have at that time. Around this time, Max would get married and father three children. However, his current position with Russian nobility made him become more aware of the persecution that were being faced by Jews throughout the area. It was at this point that he and his family decided to flee to start a new life. They were worried about doing this as there could be repercussions for leaving, but thanks to the help of some friends and family, they were able to escape start a new life in America. In 1904, Max Factor moved to America with just $400 in his pocket, his wife, and children. The change in the name of Max Factor from Maximilian Factorowitz was not only to be easier to pronounce in American society, but also helped to mask him from Russians who may be looking for him. In 1904, Max Factor attended the World's Fair, selling creams, rouges, and fragrances, and it was a big success. However, at this time, his business partner stole not only the products, but also the profits from that day. Luckily, Max was able to get a little help from family and friends and establish his business once more, opening up a barber shop that would also have wigs, fragrances, and creams. In 1909, Max Factor moved to LA and founded the business that would then last for well over a century and become one of the leaders in cosmetics. Makeup at the time was thoroughly unrefined and was more commonly just grease paint. If you've ever worked with grease paint, you know this is a thick substance, it's hard to work with, and at that time, the shades that were being used were pretty garish because they were being used for black and white. Black and white makeup at the time was completely different in order to showcase and hide certain features, opposite and complementary colors were used, and if you were to see a person from a black and white film in real life, they would oftentimes look sickly, if not dead with dark circles around their eyes. It's just what they had to do to color correct. In the 1920s, Max Factor created the first thin grease paint makeup. This was a makeup that could still be used on stage and screen, but also was acceptable for everyday use. And it's with that that Max Factor began to change makeup history. One huge advantage that he had was that he ran his own color lab in Los Angeles. He was able to scientifically engineer specific shades and formulas for his clients. This led to him being a huge Hollywood makeup artist with clients like Liz Taylor, Judy Garland, Betty Davis, Jean Harlow, and the list goes on. He would then open up a very successful salon in Hollywood, servicing the most A-list and elite that Hollywood had. As the film industry began to grow, it required a makeup that could adjust and grow right along with it. This is where Max Factor really became an innovator. As black and white photo quality in film began to increase and things began to get more definition in them, he created the world's first mattifying face powder called the Color Harmony Face Powder. This was really easy just to eliminate shine in black and white. As the lighting also became more sophisticated, he then created the Pan Chromatic Face makeup. This was able to blend softer and look more natural with the upgraded lighting systems of Hollywood. 
the 1930s saw color film come into invention, and with that required an entirely new kind of makeup to be used on film and TV. Max Factor, along with his son Frank, created the first pancake makeup, and it's not too dissimilar from the pancake makeup that we know today. It's something that was used across all film and television at the time because of its wearability and the longevity that it provided. This pancake makeup was also one of the first of its kind to be put into a compact, making it easy for transportation for both actors as well as everyday makeup enthusiasts. Around this time, Max Factor also came out with the world's first lip gloss. It was something that he had invented for the films of black and white to be worn to enhance the actress's lips during production. However, they found that the luscious wet quality was something that just about every single lipstick wearer would want, and thus it became a mass marketed product. First, however, it was only available to actresses for the first two years. Imagine trying to get that product back in the day. The lip gloss was actually named X-Rated, and alleged shied from Max Factor himself against the new censorship that was being played out in Hollywood. Around this time, Max Factor also created a nail buffing powder. When buffed into the nail bed, this powder helped to enhance the natural pink tone of the nail. Within a few years, he also created a liquid white nail enhancer to be used on the edges, what we now know as French tips, and within a short matter of time, he was able to create the first liquid nail lacquer. Now, as with any leader in innovation, there were, of course, the inventions that didn't quite go over so well. One such invention is the micrometer, an apparatus that was put onto a client's head to measure all of the different bone structural as well as you know just face structural things that need to be taken into account it would look at symmetry density things like that and it would help the makeup artist to know where to adjust and sculpt the face to achieve the most symmetrical and therefore the most beautiful version of the person if you look at it now it kind of looks like a torture device What's really neat is that the last one of these in existence is actually right here in Los Angeles at the Hollywood Entertainment Museum in Hollywood, right off of Hollywood Boulevard. They actually have an entire makeup room devoted to Max Factor and the products he used. It's called the Max Factor Makeup Room because the building actually used to belong to Max Factor himself. Definitely something to check out if you're a makeup enthusiast, if you love Hollywood history, or you just want to see some really neat vintage stuff. During the 1930s, Frank Factor would then become Max Factor Jr. And in 1938, Max Factor himself passed away. The company was then led by Frank, AKA Max Factor Jr., passed on to the grandchildren and then the great grandchildren. It's been a line that's been around for forever and it's currently owned by Cody Fragrances. Now, if you're a fan of the Max Factor family and you wanna know a little bit of history, his great grandsons, Dean and Davis, are actually the creators of Smashbox Cosmetics, one of the just world's leaders in artistry cosmetics. It's really neat to see how from the beginner of a cosmetics industry to the great grandchildren, they've created just a lineage of beautiful quality makeup. Max Factor is one of the few lines that has never gone away. From 1908 until 2020, right here during the quarantine, <laughs> Max Factor will always be around. It's a really beautiful line. It's adjusted for every single makeup trend. It's worked with many, many celebrities, and it's always been on the pulse of where things are going in the cosmetics industry. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Makeup Your Mind TV Beauty History. Please hit the like and subscribe. Feel free to follow me, Just In Time, on Instagram at Just In Time Art, as well as Makeup Your Mind TV at Makeup Your Mind TV. Are there any other beauty history subjects you'd like to see talked about? Please leave a comment below and have a great day.